Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury CC3 bringing you a match between Klon and El Torero on Cooper Hill. The last time we saw this map, there wasn't a whole lot of reclaim going on. This and El Torero is well, actually, he had to reclaim that because he wanted to build the shield butt factory. But there wasn't a whole lot of reclaim going on, and it looks like this game is going to be slightly different. Klon getting up a very quick constructor, and that constructor will probably be used very quickly to start. Reclaiming. It's like I'm using the map marks thing. Anyway, yes, reclaim is in fact what Klon is up to, so we will see some reclaim. However, Elterer on the other hand, going straight for military, actually going straight for Dirtbag for scouting and a bandit as well. Dirtbag for scouting, bandit just for getting a bit of area control. While Klon getting a bandit of his own just for defense. And this convict is... Not reclaiming right now, not sure why, but that is what he was planning on doing with it. There it goes, now it's reclaiming. Like I said before, I believe it was during one of the tournament matches, not enough reclaim was going on. However, some damage being dealt to that convict, it, the bandit's under the shield. Knocking it down, but Klon does have a beam laser to get rid of that bandit, and the dirtbag trying to get in front of the factory to just, and it has gone in front of the factory, has died in front of it, set up a really inconvenient hill, but that's going to be a quick terraform. Klon just needs to go and do the terraform. And actually, I think there might there might be room. There might be some space for at least smaller bots like bandits to get out of there. Let's see. No, there isn't. Or, well, barely. There is very barely space, but that is not good. He'll have to deal with that sooner or later. Now, Elterar, on the other hand, switching over to complete bandits. He is not doing much else right now. And bandits coming in from Klon along the south side of the map. That will be... F well, that will probably be fairly powerful. Now El Torero is setting up his own reclaim, so both players are using the reclaim on the map. That is good to see. Glad to see that this map is very much dependent on reclaim. You can do a lot with it. You can really power your economy faster than normal. No, the interestingly, the terraform still has not been dealt with. A little bit surprised Klon has not just restored that. Because that is going to stop... I don't believe the Outlaw can actually get out of there. I'm pretty sure it's too big... This hill will block it. On the other hand, El Torero is still getting quite a lot of the center of the map. So you can see the center of the map is El Torero. So he has radar there. He can see everything right now that is going on in Klon's base. Everything but the corners that Klon is actually not even occupied at this point. Now, admittedly, those corners are metal extraction points. Six of them, in fact. So it's quite a lot of potential economy that Klon can have hidden. But El Torero, for the most part, can see what Klon is up to. Even if Klon does go to hide metal extractors there, El Torero will see that the workers had gone in that direction in order to build the metal extractors. Right now, El Torero is all-seeing and all-knowing. He knows exactly what's going on. And Klon, on the other hand, his radar is in the valley, only able to get to the halfway point in the map. Everything else is completely unknown to him. This could be a bit of a disadvantage. Now, El Torero is setting up a lot of wind gens at the top of the map. Not a terrible idea, but... Back here will be a wiser place. I mean, it's the same or very similar height. Not quite the same height as over here, but still a very similar height to it. However, it's much, much less vulnerable to have it in the back. These thugs here will be able to get through the laser turrets without too much issue. And the outlaw, for a bit of extra support. Well, the thugs are actually taking quite a bit of damage from El Torero's commander. And they have to retreat. The outlaw also has to retreat, but this not able to get that roach in. The roach was spotted too soon, unfortunately, for it. Now, interesting, one thing it could do, one thing Klon could do, I've never actually seen a player do, but I've heard people have been talking about it. You could build, like, commanders can build a sneaky peat. I believe that's under, is that under defense? Hmm. That is, well, anyway, sneaky peat, which is basically a cloaking unit. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but, ah, here we are. Sneaky peat, it's under special. You build this, and you can morph it into an eraser. The eraser can move with the roaches, and the roaches can go cloaked into the opponent's line and then blow up. Now, I've not seen anyone actually do this, but I think it would be awesome if it were done. I would really like to see it. I, I mean, it'd be kind of awesome. It would also make roaches seem broken. Speaking of roaches, there goes Klon's bandits. El Torero with a really nice roach placement, not being stopped by Klon's bandits before it's too late. And they're all destroyed in the process of that roach doing what it does best, which is blowing itself up and ending its life in a violent fashion. A violent, fiery blaze of death. 
Hopefully, the roaches do not have self-preservation programmed into them. Otherwise, that'd be a very distressing last few moments of its life. However, if, if this is at all made wisely, they would they in, probably enjoy their deaths. Or just don't care whatsoever one way or the other. Racketeer set up for Eltra. Another Racketeer is on the way. Trying to disarm these central defenses in order to actually get rid of them without having to worry too much about tanking the damage in the process. Not a bad idea. Though right now, the bandits are probably a bigger threat, and roaches are being built up as well. As it stands, El Torero does have, uh, does have a few roaches, in fact. He has one right in front of here, just in case. Very nice, too, because this, as you can see, very smooth path along the hill right there. Not an unlikely angle for which Klon could attack from. But Klon is going still from the north. He's still going to be possibly taking that angle. And that roach has not been detected. Another roach... And has been detected. Defender taking it out. Useful defender, but at the same time, Bandit's coming in to the south side, and Thug coming in here. Thugs are taking that path. They are walking right into the Roach. Gonna be able to tank everything else, but the Roach is gonna take them all out in one fell swoop. There it goes. Well, not all of them, but definitely... Nope, all of them. The ones that didn't die to the Roach die in falling damage. That Roach paid off... Paid dividends. However, Klon's Roach coming in here, able to take out a couple bandits, not even making cost. But El Torero's Roach right there, that did a wonderful job. Got rid of all of the thugs. Huge thing there, and more Roaches coming up from El Torero. He's building entirely bandits, or building entire convicts and Roaches. His bandits are doing a nice job getting microed around, harassing out all of these, all these Metal Lake to the south. And the Metal Lake to the north have been built, so El Torero cannot see that they exist. But he can probably infer that they exist, because why wouldn't they? Now, at the same time, Klon does have a good idea of what's on the north side of the map. He's not aware of these roaches, but he's aware of a lot of other things. But even then, he has nowhere near enough knowledge to easily deal with what El Torero has going, but El Torero basically has the entire east side of the map. That's his. In fact, the south is very difficult to penetrate right now, especially being that Klon has no, no units really penetrating this, no thugs, nothing to really tank that damage, nothing to attack large groups are attacking from afar. The Racketeer is doing a nice job disabling everything. But even then, it can only disable for a few seconds at a time. There's no follow-up units to actually get rid of the disabled units in question. Now, at the same time, a jump jet plant being built by Klon. What the heck? Okay, well, I guess Klon really is kind of desperate. I mean, jump jets aren't terribly bad, but they are definitely unconventional. You do not see jump jets come up very often, and I would be surprised if that isn't going to do something meaningful, because that... I mean, it might not do anything meaningful. It might just be a total waste of money. But, yeah, Klon is about half economy right now. He lost all of his mechs to the south. He still has mechs to the north, but El Torero has... Actually, nowhere near as many mechs. He's just... He's living off a of reclaim. El Torero has reclaim going entirely for him, while Klon, on the other hand, trying to reclaim what he can, and doing a pretty good job of it, too, but... Oh, actually, El Torero was entirely going after Reclaim. Without Reclaim, his economy is actually slightly weaker than Klon's, which is not surprising. El Torero right now only has about three Metal Extractors. Wow, really? Wow, he's three Metal Extractors. El Torero has four. El Torero had about six. Or, actually, he had eight. But, like I said before, half of them were killed. Now he only has five. Sorry, not four. He only has five, getting a sixth. And rogues are coming in to try to just finish off... Klon's base. Bandits will be able to take them out without too much issue, especially since bandits can easily dodge the rockets. Bandits trying to get rid of what they can of the forces coming in. A roach takes out a bandit in its death throes, but unable to really deal a whole lot of damage. And Firewalker coming in from the jump jet factory to the north, while the shield bots still just trying to hold the fort, trying to, I guess, keep El Torero distracted. El Torero, he is aware that there's something to the north. He knows it exists. His radar, he does have radar coverage of that area, so he knows that something is there. It's unclear whether or not he knows what it is, but he isn't making it clear that he cares. From the looks of it, he's not too concerned about what's going on in the north. And an outlaw comes out, going to be destroyed by the rogues, and at the same time, the command, Altar's commander is actually slightly under attack, but not nearly enough to be worried about. Now that first firewalker, 30 seconds away from completion, Really, El Klon needs to reclaim as much as he can. He has 20 metal being poured into this factory, or at least 20 build power being poured into it. He needs to reclaim everything he can to make sure that he can get enough metal to actually make that work. 
especially since this factory is building as well. This factory actually is building at full speed, so this caretaker is hardly helping out at all. It's it's adding about three metal per second to the jump jet factory, and that's nowhere near enough. And now that's being switched off. Shieldbot factory being switched off. The factory and caretaker to the north, the jump jet factory, able to do what it can, and the firewalker has been set up. It looks like it's going for the base right now, but at the same time, Eltro's commander actually Eltro's commander is finishing off Klon's original base, getting rid of the Shieldbot factory, and wow, that's well. Eltro has a lot pour of build power pouring into his factory, but not a whole lot of metal to support that. I'm a bit surprised he's doing that, and not say spending half of them to reclaim the rest of the map. He does have a few reclaims going on, but I'm a bit surprised he's not just sending as many constructors as he can to reclaim the map. Especially since the south side is entirely his, and then use the rest of them to just pump out units quickly. Firewalker has been unleashed. It is going out. It's dealing quite a bit of damage, actually, but it looks like... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I believe this is the corpse of the Firewalker, in fact. No, never mind. The Firewalker is very much alive. And very much angry. It's, in fact, all that exists right now for Klon. This is his only military asset, is this Firewalker. He has nothing else built up. He has no other factors right now. He has jacks coming in as well. They will very shortly be up, but they're a little bit tricky to use well. However, Firewalkers have a huge damage output. I'm a little bit surprised he's not going for the center, just getting rid of the wind gens. If he takes out the wind gens, that'll take out most of El Torero's economy. El Torero's commander only has about 3.2 energy income. Barely any energy income. And it looks like the turrets are taking a fair amount of damage, but not a whole lot yet. That Firewalker is going to need to fire... I was thinking the Wind Gens. The Wind Gens is what he needs to kill. Because if El Toro loses that, that's most of his economy down. Although admittedly, once again, Reclaim is still a powerful force in this map. But a lot of the Reclaim, especially in the E7 map, has been taken. There is still a Convict taking what it can. And Bandit's coming out to try to get rid of this Firewalker. But that Wind Gen is going down, and that is slowing stuff down. And the Firewalker can, of course, deal with this. Just throwing down a pile of fire, a pile of Napalm. The Bandits will walk through it and die from there. The Puppies gonna try to take care of what they can, but hard for them to do so. They can take care of a bandit each, pretty much. Assuming they don't die from bandits killing them beforehand, but it looks like even then, enough defenders and enough puppies are able to get rid of the bandits, able to defend effectively, and Klon's able to just burn the rest of it, but a roach, not able to do all that much damage, actually. Looks like it does about as much damage to its own troops as to Klon, so right now, El Torero has an economic advantage, but Klon is... Actually, kind of ahead. I mean, Klon still actually has an economic advantage in terms of metal extractors. He's a bit behind in Reclaim right now, but the economy is so variable just because of how, like I said before, how big Reclaim is on this map. And down goes a Roach, nicely disarmed by a Firewalker from a distance. And Jax taking care of the Stinger as it is disarmed, unable to fight back. The Jack has enough health that he can easily actually tank all that damage to begin with, but why bother? Why, uh, why tank damage when you can just stop it from being dealt in the first place? And El Torero's commander is trying to take some damage from the Firewalker's attack. And this Jack is needing to get out of there. Needs to jump out of the way because, as it stands, there is a lot of fire being thrown at it. And puppies coming in, and apparently puppies have been puppies have been using the reclaim very nicely to grow into more puppies because puppies can they can take reclaim and then use it to get additional puppies. They can just they just gray goo with reclaim. Which is kind of how they pay for themselves, really. And as we see, they are starting it. They're taking that reclaim. They are turning it into more puppies. Although, yes, we actually will see some additional puppies being spawned from this. There is enough reclaim for more puppies to come out. There, a couple more puppies get birthed. Well, get split off, rather, from the existing puppies. And it looks like there's a lot coming for Klon. So Klon's getting a ton of puppies at the same time as Firewalker attacking heavily. But the convicts coming in to reclaim the last bits of damaged, destroyed goods at Klon's southern, well, Klon's used power plant dealership. But now that that's been completely cleaned out, El Torero actually, a bit surprisingly, not damaging this heavily. This is, this is part of Klon's advantage right now, is that he does have a stable economy, not relied on reclaim. And Klon going to the north, double checking if El Torero has built up there, and no, he has not a... Well, Roach is not doing a whole lot of damage because the puppies were in missile mode and the Roach is detonated. They did spot in advance. That was definitely helpful. El Torero's commander taking a lot of damage from its own Roach, actually. The Roach not able to kill that Jack, but the Jack is 
looks like it'll probably go down with the commander. As the commander goes down, the jack goes down right after. But still, that jack did a lot of damage. Getting rid of the commander. Getting rid of a lot of El Toro's energy. Well, infrastructure. I mean, right now, energy right now is entirely reclaim. El Toro's economy is entirely reclaim based. In fact, Melvis Press, he has so much energy as it is. There's no fusion plan or anything. He's just going entirely off reclaim. But at the same time, puppies are just going across the map, taking down what they can. I have never seen so much puppy usage before. This is... This is definitely surprising. Definitely an interesting use of... Of the jump bot factory. But the thing is, at the same time... Oh, there is a fusion plant. Never mind. There is a fusion plant that is getting some overdrive on these metal extractors. They're basically doing double duty as a result of the overdrive. And a cloakabot factory coming in just to deal with this in a bit more of a cost-effective fashion. A bit more of a typical fashion. Three seconds before that cloakabot factory is done. And at the same time, a lot of thugs coming in. No felons, though. Not yet, anyway. But the felon is being constructed. And the thugs are there for support. The firewalker is doing what it can. But... Even with that, it's going to be rather difficult. This Cloakabot factory is going to take a lot of damage. Disarm doing what it can to get rid of the outlaws. But even then, the Firewalker not shooting in the right spots. Admittedly, the right spot is going to damage the Cloakabot factory if it's shot there. Jack, on the other hand, looks to be a bit more effective at dealing with this. But even with that, it's there's a lot of damage output coming in here. And once that Felon catches up, this Felon here is going to be huge. So it's going to... Well, it's up to, the, up to the jack, really. The Firewalker about to go down. About to kill itself, actually. There it goes. The Firewalker has gone down. It did a lot of damage, though. That was a very effective Firewalker there. And the jack finishing everything else off. Getting rid of that thug. And there goes all the shield support, actually. More thugs are being constructed for El Torero, but... He doesn't have... I don't see what he has for economy right now. He currently has five metal extractors. Most of them are about two. These in the back here are about five. So El Torero heavily focused on that overdrive. And he does actually have... He has enough thugs and mostly convicts to power that felon. And a roach comes in. Gets rid of the Cloakabot factory. Gets rid of a bunch of power plants. And Klon realizes he can't do much from here. And throws in the towel. But that was an intense game. Wow. I have... You don't see enough jump bot factory really. That, that is one thing you don't see enough of in 0k. Is jump bots. But we saw them there, and they did a very interesting job. So I'll be back with another game. See, the last game for tonight is going to be between Google Frog and Klon. Stay tuned for that.